Welcome to the second of three videos in the introduction to the GDTF Builder series. This video takes a first look at the geometry pane of the GDTF Builder, focusing on its basic user interface, geometries, models, and the geometry tree. The properties section and the 3D visualizer will be covered in the last video in this series. If you haven't already watched the first video in this series, it is strongly recommended that you do so before continuing with this video. You can jump to the specific sections of this video you need using the timestamp shown here. Open the geometry page by hitting the link in the menu bar. The page is divided into four main sections. At the top is the menu or link bar with the builder page links and other universal features. On the left-hand side of the page are the geometry tree and properties. To the right is the main 3D visualizer. Both the geometry tree and property sections can be collapsed using the minus icon in the upper right-hand corners of the sections. They can both be closed completely by clicking on the blue tab. The sections can be horizontally resized by clicking on the divider and dragging left or right. Going all the way to the left will close both the geometry tree and the properties. Let's take a look at the geometry tree first. The tree has two tabs, geometries and models. Both display the geometries that you're using in your GDTF. The geometries tab shows how the geometries relate to each other using a parent-child structure to define the relationship. And the models tab displays the individual geometries in your file that can be used without any info about how they are used or relate to each other. We'll go through the Geometries tab first. We'll use the same template file as we did previously, so that there's some geometry already here. The top level, or parent object, in this case is the base of the moving head. The first level child object is the yoke, which in turn has the head as a child, and the last geometry child is the beam. Moving a parent geometry will move all the children as well, for example, if I move the yoke, then the head and beam will also be moved. The triangle to the left of each geometry enables you to expand or collapse children of that geometry. The next icon tells you what type of geometry it is. For example, a cube for the base, a circular arrow is used for geometry that can rotate, like the head or the yoke, and a bulb for the beam. Next is the name of the geometry. A tag displays if there is a DMX control mode linked to the geometry, the eye icon controls the geometry's visibility in the 3D visualizer. You can use the red X to delete the geometry from the tree. If the deleted geometry has any child geometries, these will also be deleted at the same time. Because device attributes and functions are defined by linking them to the related geometry, you must have at least one geometry in your GDTF file for it to be valid. So let's add a new top level geometry and take a look at the add geometry window. The window is divided into two sections. On the left is the general properties of the geometry, and on the right are the models that can be used for the geometry. First, we need to give the geometry a name. This will be used in both the geometries and model tabs. It's good practice to name the geometry based on what it is, for example, a yoke for a moving light yoke. Next, we'll choose the model for the geometry. The list includes a variety of options. For complex or detailed devices, you can import a mesh-based model created elsewhere. You should use a GLB file for this. GLB is the binary format of the GLTF uh, file format. When you hit enter to exit the dialog, you'll be prompted to provide the file location that contains the model that you want to upload. If your model is simpler, or you do not have access to a mesh file for the model, you can choose from a range of default models like a moving head yoke, a selection of geometry primitives like cubes or spheres that can then be modified in the 3D visualizer later or you can pick any existing model that is already in your file. We'll take a closer look at models in a bit. Once you've chosen your geometry model, it's time to define its size. For mesh models, this should already be defined in the mesh file being imported, so make sure to turn on Use File Dimensions. Otherwise, you can set its length, width, and height in millimeters. You can change this later as needed. The last step is to define what type of geometry the model represents using the drop-down list. This is vitally important. Since the attributes of the device you are creating are linked to specific parts of the device geometry, just like in the real world, the geometry type is used to link these attributes to the correct part of your device. It also sets the geometry type icon in the geometry tab and the available properties in the property section. 
let's jump back to having a mesh file selected and hit OK to exit. File Explorer or Finder will be automatically opened so that you can select your mesh file to upload. For now, let's hit Cancel and go back and choose a cylinder primitive instead. The cylinder is now my top level geometry and visible in both the Geometry tab and in the 3D Visualizer. Now, when I open the Model tab, you'll see that it's visible there as well. A model is any 3D piece of geometry that can be used in the Geometry tab. The list displays all available models already in your file. If you delete the geometry from the Geometry tab, the model will still be available here, as you can see. You can delete models by clicking on the red cross, the same as in the Geometries tab. It's important to note that any model currently being used in the Geometries tab cannot be deleted, unless you first remove it from the Geometries tab. All the models display as default geometry with only their name, dimensions, and primitive type available in the properties. You can edit any model in the list by selecting it and changing its properties. Any change you make here will also affect the model in the Geometries tab. And you can also create new models by hitting the Add Model text. The Add Model dialog is similar to the Add Geometries dialog. The main differences are it only has a single section. And since models do not document their type, no geometry type dropdown. Instead of the Add Model section, there is a Primitive Type and Upload File dropdown. Otherwise, the name, use file dimensions, and length, width, and height fields are all the same. Before we go any further, we need to take a deeper look at using mesh files for models. For this, I'm going to open an existing Roby GDTF that I've already downloaded from the share. Using a mesh file as the basis for your model adds several new fields in the properties. These enable you to create a more detailed GDTF by adding high and low res versions of your mesh file. And to help ensure forwards and backwards compatibility, you can have both GLB and 3DS mesh files for each model. This section is also where you would set up the 2D geometry of your GDTF by adding SVG files to provide clean 2D graphics of the model. Add a top, side, and front for each model for use in CAD software. That brings us to the end of the second video in the introduction to the GDTF Builder series. The next and last video in this series will continue looking at the geometry page, focusing on the properties and the 3D visualizer.